Since the dawn of humanity, wolves have been a problem. In 1849, one wolf attack alone saw 300 civilians die, and there are countless more attacks unrecorded by history. The point I'm making is wolves are bad people. First of all, they are impolite, but even worse, they have a habit of using their teeth, which tends to be sharp. So as you'd imagine, wolves have always been feared. And as if wolves alone were not bad enough, they also had to worry about men who became wolves. For much of history, it was generally believed werewolves exist, and the truth is, it might not have been entirely superstition. There are many cases of people accused of being real werewolves, some of which still shrouded in mystery now. As far as historical records are concerned, Spain's first serial killer was a man called Manuel Blanco Roma Santa. After more than 20 deaths in the mid-1800s, he was finally caught, but he denied any personal guilt, claiming to suffer a medical condition that rendered him a bloodthirsty wolf. At his trial, he admitted to 13 murders, but claimed only to have killed them while already having transformed into a wolf. He said for the last 13 years, a curse had left him periodically unable to control his body, becoming the wolfman he now is. The judge did not buy this excuse, sentencing him to death, but the people of Spain did. Massive outcry demanded his medical condition be studied, so that the nature of werewolves could finally be understood. So before his execution, the Queen of Spain personally intervened, commuting his sentence to life in prison. Still, Within months of arriving at prison, he was dead. The cause of death is unknown, but rumour tells he was shot dead by guards, who believed he really was a werewolf. 1685 was a strange year for the Principality of Ansbach, a small German state that no longer exists. It began with the discovery of a dead sheep. For months following that initial discovery, local livestock were frequently found dead, as if torn apart by large animals. For the time, this was nothing unusual, but when children also began to be found dead, everyone knew they had a serious problem, so they organised a mass hunt to go after whatever was intruding on their land. Then one day, a foreign priest came to town, claiming to be tracking down a werewolf who fled to the area. Finally, they understood what was going on, According to historical records, they found the beast soon after. With gunfire and a pack of dogs, they chased it into a well, where it became trapped and was immediately killed. As the beast lay dying, it partially morphed back into a human, leaving its corpse somewhere between wolf and man. Thereafter, it was hanged from a gibbet as a warning to other wolfmen. In 1598, an entire family were accused of being werewolves and executed en masse. At the time, France had long been in the grip of panic. Any claim, no matter how true, could see angry mobs take to the street. One day, a 15-year-old boy was attacked by a large wolf. Luckily, a nearby crowd heard the attack and was able to scare the wolf off. As the boy's wounds were tended to, he claimed the wolf had large hands, like those of a human. Immediately, it was decided they were dealing with a werewolf. As the wolf had been injured by the crowd, they set about searching for someone with any kind of fresh wound. It was not long before they found that person, a local woman with a limp. Without trial, they executed her, but that wasn't the end of it. Rumour spread that her entire family were practitioners of black magic, regularly transforming themselves into monstrous wolves. The accusation alone sealed their fate, the entire Gandayon family were arrested and killed. In the same year, the Gandayon family were accused of being werewolves, so was Jacques Roulet. According to a historical account written more than two centuries later, a group of soldiers once happened upon the mutilated corpse of a young boy. Following a trail of blood, they saw two wolves run into a nearby forest. Chasing them down, the wolves escaped from view and were not seen again. They did, however, find a strange-looking man, exhausted and dressed in rags. From his hands and mouth, blood dripped to the ground. 
In the age of witch hunts, there could be only one response. The man was dragged into town and put on trial. Under interrogation, he admitted to all kinds of wrongdoing. That he came from a rich family, but a household slave corrupted his mind from a young age, teaching him to practice black magic and worship the devil. One day, the slave gave him an ointment that transformed him into a wolf, enabling him to kill people without consequence. All this he confessed without any use of torture. But strangely, he was not put to death. Like most other French people, he was sent to an insane asylum. Livonia is a historical region in the Baltics, that for over a century was part of the Swedish Empire. It was during this period that one of the most mysterious cases emerged, the Werewolf of Livonia. In the year 1691, the church of a small village was looted. With no sign of the culprit, an old man who lived beside the church was summoned as a witness. But instead of discussing the church robbery, he openly declared himself to be a werewolf. Authorities were stunned. For years, rumour had told this old man was a practitioner of magic, but no one had expected him to volunteer such a confession. According to his story, he had spent years transforming into a wolf at will. He claimed a wolfman could pass on this ability to anyone else, simply by sharing a drink with them. Interestingly, he hated witches, claiming to have killed many. He said werewolves served God, and that he was a true Christian. Unsure whether or not to kill him, he was instead banished from town. It might seem like almost every alleged werewolf from history was French, and from here on out it won't get any less French-ish. In 1521, two men were executed on werewolf charges. One of those men was Pierre Burgot, a shepherd from eastern France. One night, 20 years before, when he was tending to his flock of sheep, three heavily armed men approached. The men threatened to kill his sheep, unless he would renounce religion and worship them in the place of God. Fearing the loss of his fluffy sheep, Burgo agreed, and kissed each of their hands. From that day, he was different, endowed with the uncontrollable ability to become a wolf. Every full moon, he and another man suffering the same curse would meet in the woods, ready to become wolves. Together, they would terrorise nearby towns, tearing their inhabitants apart. There was once a notorious serial killer called Gilles Garnier. A long-time hermit, he was distrusted by the community he lived outside of. With no source of income, he was in a near-constant state of starvation. Then during one particularly harsh winter, he took to cannibalism, murdering children and carving out chunks of their flesh. Finding a string of mutilated corpses, locals came to believe a werewolf was responsible. And first on their list of suspects was the strange hermit. Village authorities offered a bounty to anyone able to bring him in. At his trial, he admitted to being a bloodthirsty wolfman. After months of starvation, as he lay slowly dying, a ghost appeared before him offering an instant solution. That solution turned out to be the werewolf curse, and a constant hunger for human flesh. In medieval Belarus, there was once a notorious ruler called Veslav. Notoriety was nothing unusual for a medieval king, but Veslav was different. As a semi-legendary figure, it's difficult to discern facts from fiction. It is said he was born from magic, his mother unable to have children, she turns to a group of sorcerers who promised her a son. The promise came true, but Veslav was born cursed, and would grow up to be a werewolf. So while by day he fought to expand his kingdom, and lessen the struggle of his people, he was by night much more cruel and violent, racing from town to town in the form of a wolf, massacring their inhabitants. Each full moon, he would render entire settlements ghost towns, but as he was king, nothing was ever done to stop it. In the late 1500s, children began to disappear from the small town of Chalon. For a while, it was speculated they were simply running away, but as the disappearances went on, some locals began claiming to witness a large beast in the woods. Like a cross between wolf and man, it was seen near the town each night a child went missing. Hunting parties failed to find any sign of a beast, and it seems the mystery would never be solved. But then a new rumour changed everything. It told that terrified screaming had been heard from inside a nearby tailor shop. 
for the inhabitants looking for a scapegoat, the tailor was their monster. It is said entire barrels full of human bones were found in his shop, and every wall was covered in blood. There is a Native American folktale that gives a unique view of werewolves. According to it, a young boy was once abandoned by his family. Left to fend for himself in the Great American Plains, he took to following a pack of wolves, eating what scraps of meat they left behind. In time, the wolves accepted him as one of them, raising him as a wolf. But as the boy struggled to keep up with the pack, he broke his arm. Still part of the pack, his arm gradually healed. But as it did, it reformed into something more resembling the leg of a wolf. Slowly, over a period of many years, he became a wolf, identical to any other.